Close your eyes and focus on the breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. When the Buddha gained awakening, he was watching his breath, too. So what's the difference between his breath and your breath? The breath is the same. It's the qualities of mind he brought to the, to the breath. That's what made the difference. But they're qualities of mind that we can all can develop. That's the message of his awakening. Today's Visakha, Bucha. It was on the full, dun, <coughs> excuse me, full moon day in May that the Buddha was born. And then 35 years later, it was the full moon day in May that he gained awakening. And then 45 years after that, it was on the full moon day in May that he passed away. Or as I say, totally unbound. And the event that we focus most attention on is the awakening. And that's the object of conviction. What does it mean to have conviction in the awakening? That the Buddha gained his awakening through his own efforts. It was by developing qualities in the human mind that he was able to find true happiness. And the message there, of course, is that we're human beings. We have those potentials in our minds as well. We can develop them too. And even broader terms, it gives a message that your actions really do make a difference. You have to be very careful to do things well, to do things right. Because you do have this power. You have the power to think, and you have the power to act, and you have the power to speak with your intentions. And you want to make sure that your intentions are skillful intentions, intentions that harm nobody, intentions that can be helpful when, po when possible. And it really is important to hold to that principle. That's the main teaching here, which is that your actions really do make a difference, so you have to be careful. But they have a huge potential, so you want to develop those potentials as well. Because the world tends to tell us, well, ultimate happiness is not possible, so satisfy yourself with the things we're trying to sell you. And if you're not really convinced that an ultimate happiness is possible, then it's very easy to give in to those temptations. So try to have respect. When you have respect for the Buddha's awakening, it means you have respect for yourself, your own ability to find something that's really unconditioned, something that really doesn't depend on anything else, doesn't harm anybody else, in which there's no suffering at all. That's a possibility. So you always want to keep that in mind, and any action you can take that goes in that direction is a skillful action. Anything that leads you away is unskillful. It just piles more and more obstacles in your path. So even if you don't think you're on the verge of awakening, still it's important to take to heart the principle that the Buddha taught every time he told about his awakening. He's one of the first people to talk about a spiritual path. Some of the earliest autobiographies in world history are the Buddhas. And it's because he saw that there was something that he had done and it gave good results and it was a lesson that would be useful to other people. He wasn't showing off, he was showing the path. So try to take that path to heart because it's through that path, through right action, everything from right view all the way through right concentration. That's the path that leads to true happiness and it's available to all of us if we decide to take it. <laughs>